It seems day after day, week after week, and month after month, crazier stuff keeps happening. 2020 seems like a bad dream. With the pandemic, deaths of incredibly influential people at a young age, murder hornets, and now Asian gypsy moths? I don't know who we pissed off, but this year definitely isn't going as planned. If you haven't heard about Asian gypsy moths, they're an incredibly invasive species, considered to be in the top 100 of most destructive invasive species in the world. And based on that accolade alone, as I'm sure you can imagine, an infestation of these guys would certainly be problematic. They're known to birth larvae that consume over 500 different types of trees, shrubs, and plants, so it's safe to say that these things could take over a small forest. And considering how destructive they already are, imagine if they were to increase in size. We're talking double the appetite, double the destruction, and possibly even double the amount of larvae they give birth to. Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking, what if Asian gypsy moths doubled in size? What's going on, guys? Welcome back to LBQ. I'm your host with all the answers, Jared Bronstein, and today we're talking about 2020's next biggest problem, the Asian gypsy moth. As always, we'll be replying to some of your comments to wrap this one up, but for now, let's get right into this video, as there is a lot of information we need to cover. So to clarify, Asian gypsy moths include a handful of different types of moths. The type of moth recently found in Washington state that led to an emergency proclamation are Hokkaido gypsy moths, specifically referred to as Lamantria umbrosa. They're believed to have origins in Russia, but have spread across most of Asia as well. Obviously, they could also be found on the island in Japan, Hokkaido. So you may be wondering how they could then find their way to the US. Well, like the murder hornets, some experts believe these moths can be shipped overseas in cargo containers and will usually go unnoticed. Considering how they can birth larvae that feed on 500 plus different types of leaves, trees, bushes, and shrubs, and these moths are known to lay hundreds of eggs at a time, an infestation could certainly be problematic. These moths are known to completely defoliate trees, meaning they turn a healthy summer tree into what it would be midwinter, just dead wood. And as you can imagine, that would be a problem for any town, city, or state, especially if there are tens of thousands of these moths having a feast on local forests and parks. So imagine if they were to double their current size. FEMA moths are up to three and a half inches long, meaning we'd have moths about half a foot flying around feeding on trees. But as you can imagine, if their size were to double, that means quite literally everything else would double. They would be laying hundreds, if not possibly even thousands of eggs at a time now. This would lead to infestations occurring more often and a lot faster, giving us less time to find a way of preventing the infestation from happening in the first place. Obviously, this would be incredibly problematic, but before we go any further, I want to go more in depth about the dangers and possibilities of what could happen given our current situation. And after we have an idea of what may actually happen, then we could jump into how bad things would be if the moths grew double their size. When I started this video, I mentioned the state of Washington declared an emergency proclamation. Here's what it reads. I quote, the imminent danger of infestation seriously endangers the agricultural and horticultural industries of the state of Washington and seriously threatens the economic well-being and quality of life of state residents. The Washington State Department of Agriculture has prepared an environmental assessment and issued a determination of non-significance tiered to federal agency environmental reviews for gypsy moth management in the United States. End quote. The proclamation goes on to explain that the state's governor has authorized an aerial spray of pesticides to kill the infestation of moths and contain them before an outbreak occurs. And considering how these things are known to eat a wide variety of species, including but not limited to oak trees, apple trees, and elm trees, to name a few, you can see how a regular infestation would lead to problems. Even a few dozen moths can lead to some serious destruction of heavily forested areas. And due to the fact that these things are simply known to live just to eat, it wouldn't be long before we started seeing the negative impacts of their presence. And these moths are known to fly up to 20 miles to get their food, meaning that a small infestation could easily lead to a much bigger problem. An example of this would be, somehow, 10 female Asian gypsy moths find their way into a park with a lot of trees. They each birth anywhere between 250 to 500 baby larvae. Even if half the larvae don't survive for whatever reason, there's still a minimum of 2,500 baby caterpillars feeding on various leaves, trees, and bushes, who will eventually turn into moths that will birth their own larvae. Of course, while all of this is going on, you would still have 10 adult female moths that would also want to eat. Eventually, the food, or in this case, leaves and trees are wiped clean, and the infestation moves onto their next area. Rinse and repeat, you got thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of these things infesting a local forest. So now, if we were to double their size, you can see what types of problems this would lead to. Double the amount of larva, double the amount of food consumed, and the rate at which they spread would also most likely be doubled. Inevitably, this would mean that our time to combat the possible infestation would also be cut in half, 
assuming the moths are twice as problematic as they currently are. But the big problem with these moths isn't that they kill trees. I've been saying that both the moths and their larvae feed on the leaves and trees, which is true. But that doesn't kill them. They just eat their leaves and fungus, leaving a bear tree vulnerable to disease or other pest infestations, which may eventually lead to the tree dying. Now, I know earlier I compared the trees to being a dead tree in the winter after it's been fed on. That was more so just a comparison. The trees aren't actually dead just completely bare. Now going back to when I mentioned disease, when we hear disease, we think of our current pandemic or other horrible illnesses that have taken numerous lives. The good news is diseases that come from trees don't necessarily convert into a disease that would spread to humans. However, as we know, a lack of trees can lead to a handful of other problems. Environmental, social, and economical impacts are sure to occur, following the destruction or infestation of a forest thanks to these moths. Aside from the effect on wildlife and their habitats being completely destroyed, Really, I think our biggest issue would be trying to figure out how these things doubled in size in the first place. As we know, obviously their presence in general is problematic. This is clear, especially when compared to European gypsy moths, who in 2017 alone allegedly defoliated one third of the entire state of Massachusetts. As you can imagine, European gypsy moths are a similar species, but have origins in Europe. Unlike Asian gypsy moths, the female European moths can't fly. They also birth larvae that don't eat nearly as wide or broad of a range of species of trees, plants, and shrubs compared to Asian gypsy larvae. According to the Massachusetts Agricultural Department, in 2018 alone, the state lost about a quarter of their hardwood trees, including three quarters of their oak trees due to gypsy moth infestations. Now, considering how a species of moth, which is known to be less dangerous in regards to how destructive they can be, led to a third of the state of Massachusetts being affected, Imagine how much of an impact the Asian gypsy moths could have. Who's to say they wouldn't be responsible for the defoliation of half the state of Massachusetts? Now imagine if they were double their size. Does that mean the entire state would be affected? Obviously, when talking about statistics and numbers, it's tough to determine what would actually happen. There are so many variables such as weather, the health of the trees before infestation, location, and so on. So I think it's safe to say if these things were to double in size, yeah, that would be incredibly problematic, especially considering how the state of Washington is already taking the necessary steps to prevent an infestation of normal-sized Asian gypsy moths. But as I mentioned before, I think our main concern would be trying to figure out how these things doubled in size in the first place. The discovery of a six and a half or seven inch Asian gypsy moth would not only be terrifying to see, but would lead to a lot of questions. Was this man-made? Is there only one of them? What caused the exponential growth in the first place? Maybe the larvae were born near a nuclear plant, or possibly came into contact with radiation, creating a mutant version of the Asian gypsy moth. As you can see the question, what if the Asian gypsy moths doubled in size, is quite a loaded question. Aside from looking at the effects they would have on us as a society, and possibly the rest of the world, we'd also need to find out what caused their random growth. Asian gypsy moths aren't a new species. They've been around for hundreds of years, at least that we know of, and if they suddenly started appearing to be double their size, well, I got a feeling we may be setting ourselves up for another LBQ. What if Mothra from Godzilla was real? All joking aside here, guys, to wrap this one up, if Asian gypsy moths were to double in size, we'd see the impacts immediately. Not to say we'd have a bunch of huge moths flying around attacking us. They wouldn't, and truthfully, they have short lifespans of about two weeks. Adult males' purpose is simply to reproduce, but if you have hundreds or thousands of moths reproducing hundreds of their own larvae to feed on leaves and trees, well, I'm not a mathematician, but you can see how this would be an issue. And if Washington State thinks the moths are already enough of a concern to declare an emergency proclamation, I can't imagine how they would handle discovering one twice its current size. Now that does it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you guys want to see a video about Mothra, well, we actually did What If Mothra Was Real not too long ago on our channel, so be sure to check that one out after this video. For now, guys, we're going to reply to some comments from the video, What If North Korea and South Korea Started World War III? MB Gamer said the war hasn't ended, that agreement didn't end anything, it was an agreement to come to a peace treaty. Now, I'm like I'm not trying to I'm not trying to call you out here, buddy, but it did officially end on April 27, 2018. I get that, you know, they're not in the best terms, but technically at the summit, like Kim Jong-un stepped into South Korea. South Korea's president, who I cannot remember off the top of my head, uh, I think Maybe Jay Moon might be his name. I don't know off the top of my head. He stepped into North Korea. It officially ended the Korean War. They're not necessarily on good terms. They're not necessarily best of friends, but the Korean War officially did end on April 27, 2018. You can look it up. Vikram Aditya said, as Einstein said, World War IV would be fought with sticks and stones. I love the quote, but I, yeah, if it got to that point, I don't think we're gonna have a third world war though, to be honest, so. Ivan Hadiski said, people, can this year get any worse? God, perhaps. I'm not gonna get into that. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronson. You've been watching LBQ. We'll see you in the next one.